encourage you to keep on going to the trumpet sounds. Amen. Amen. John chapter 16 tonight, John chapter number 16. Uh, the Lord has directed me to this passage of Scripture, and there's no question in my heart and mind that this is the message for this hour. And I appreciate it when the Lord just confirms His message in my heart. And I, I'm grateful to be here. And I appreciate your pastor, his dear family. Uh, I just wish they learned how to feed somebody. You know what I mean? Uh, we had something today. I can't remember the name of it. But anyway, I think it's the best slaw I've ever had in my life. Uh, what's the name of that place, brother? Hathaways. Hathaways. It was good. It was chicken. We are Baptists. You know what I mean? All these kind of things. But I'm, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be here. I'll be honest with you, I want the Lord to get all the glory tonight. The Lord knows that. And I want to help you. You know, sometimes when, when, when God's Word is preached, sometimes it convicts, and that's good for us. No doubt about that. But sometimes when it's preached, it's, it's to encourage us. And tonight the Lord has led me to encourage you. And I know no better way to do this than just let the words of the Lord Jesus speak to us. In John chapter 16, I want you just to read with me verse number 33. I'll read it out loud. You, you can listen there. I'm preaching on verses 16 down to verse 33. Uh, but I'm just going to go to verse 33 to get our text. Jesus said, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Notice this phrase toward the end of this verse. It's the title of my message tonight. It's the words, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. And I want to preach to you on that subject tonight. Let's pray. Father, help me to strengthen us, strengthen our mind, our body, all of it. And may your will be done in this service. Lord, forgive me for anything in my heart and mind that should not be there. I want to be clean. And I pray that as I stand behind this sacred desk that I'm emptied of myself and that you will fill me with the fresh oil of the Holy Spirit of God. I pray that you minister to us, encourage us tonight, speak to our hearts, and challenge us from your word in Jesus' name. Amen. As we come to this passage of Scripture, beginning in verse number 16, I'll get there momentarily. The Lord Jesus has been pouring His heart out to these men who are with Him on the night before His crucifixion. This is the night before He'll be crucified. He knows in just a little while He'll be taken from them and hung on an old rugged cross and He will die for the sin of the world. In order to prepare them for, that, for, 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 for what was in their near future here, He told them how the world would hate them and the world would persecute them. This is all in the context here. He told them it would be so severe that they would put them out of the synagogue and even kill them thinking they were doing God's service. See, he was telling them these things so they would not be offended, the Bible says. That word offended means to stumble or to be tripped up. And even though the Lord gave them wonderful promises and told them that it was advantageous that he was going to go away, the news of his soon departure from them and their coming persecution filled their heart with sorrow. Look at, look at verse number 6 here. The Bible says, but because I've said these things unto you, Jesus said, sorrow hath filled your heart. They're broken. And you move into the verses of our text, beginning with verse number 16. We see the Lord continues to speak to these men, giving them instructions and trying to encourage their troubled hearts. And at the conclusion of His message to these men, the Lord Jesus made a statement that the Lord has drawn my attention to. It's the statement in verse 33 where the Lord said, Be of good cheer. This word means to have courage. It means to be comforted, to be of good comfort. Now let's put ourselves, I'm just, I'm just laying foundation here. Let us put ourselves there at this time in that room with those men. They have just heard how the Lord was going to leave them. And the world was going to hate them. And the world was going to persecute them. And the world was even going to kill them. Yet in the face of this troubling news, our Lord looks at them and looks at us, if you will. Put yourself in that room. And He says, be of good cheer. Have courage. Be comforted. Now my question is, how in the world could these men be of good cheer after hearing what they've, 
what they're going to go through. How could they take courage and be comforted in the midst of their sorrow? Do you mean to tell me that the Lord has made it possible for His children to be comforted with courage in the midst of being hated and because of our yes, a thousand times? Yes. Dying news. These men did not have to go through life afraid and sorrowful. Rather, they could go through life, even persecution and even martyrdom, with courage and comfort in their heart. My question is how? And the answer is by focusing on what the Lord said in these verses. If you're a child of God, listen to the following truths and take courage. Be comforted. Be of good cheer of what the Lord said in these closing verses of His message to these men right before He was taken from them and crucified. Understand that these men had grown to love the Lord Jesus Christ. They had been with Him for three and a half years, so to speak. And they loved Him and they, they, they believed in Him. But now this night when He tells them, you're getting ready to, to lose me for a little while. I'm getting ready to leave you here. Their hearts sunk in their chest. They didn't understand this at first. And yet Jesus said, the world's going to step in and hate you and kill you and persecute you, thinking that they're doing God's service. Boy, that's news to get excited about, right? Jesus is leaving, and the world is going to hate us and kill us and persecute us. But in the middle of all that troubling news, and he knew, he knew they were troubled, he knew they were filled with sorrow, he made that statement, be of good cheer. Be joyful. Take courage. Be comforted. And he gives four reasons why they should be. Four reasons, beginning in verse number 16, of how we can be of good cheer in the midst of trouble, in the midst of sorrow. Hey folks, this world is filled with sorrow. And this life is filled with trouble. It really is. I mean, there's trouble everywhere. How can we be of good cheer? Even when the world seemingly is coming in all around us. There's four, there's, there's, there's four reasons how we can be of good cheer. First of all is found in verses 16 to 22, and that is this. Be of good cheer because, number one, in a little while we will see Jesus. Look at verse number 16. He said, a little while and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while and ye shall see me because I go to the Father. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he saith unto us? A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me. And because I go to the Father. They said, Therefore, what is this that he saith? A little while, we cannot tell what he saith. Now when Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him, and said unto him, Do you inquire among yourselves of that I said? A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me. Verily, verily, I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament. But the world shall rejoice. No doubt he's talking about the crucifixion there. And ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Amen. A woman when she is in travail has sorrow because her hour is come. But as soon as she's delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again. Amen. And your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Here's the point. The Lord told these men during this time where he's just unloaded on them, where their heart is crushed inside of their bosom, so to speak. I mean, their plans have crumbled before their feet as well. Jesus is getting ready to leave. And Jesus said, but be of good cheer because I'm not going to be gone forever. He said, just a little while and you're going to see me again. Here's the point here. In that verse where he says, in just a little while you will see me. You, ye, ver, ver, verse 16, in just a little while you shall not see me. That word see there means to be a spectator. It means to be a spectator. In other words, in just a little while you're not going to be able to see me like you're seeing me now. You're not going to see me like this for very much longer. That's what the first C means, like, means right there. It refers to them seeing Him as they were used to seeing Him among them, walking among them. But you know the second time He says this in verse number 16, and again a little while and ye shall see Me, that's a different word. You know what that word see there means? 
It means to look at something remarkable with eyes wide open. In other words, he's telling them in just a little while, you'll see me like you've never seen me before. The disciples didn't understand what the Lord was saying to them. So he began to explain to them what he meant. He said that they would weep and lament, but the world would rejoice. No doubt this is in reference to his soon crucifixion and death. But he told his disciples that their sorrow would be turned into joy. Then he likens it to a woman giving birth to a baby in verses 21 and 22. He told these men that they were going to experience anguish and sorrow like a woman giving birth. It's painful. It hurts. It's sorrowful. But this pain and anguish and and sorrow would soon turn into joy and their heart would rejoice. This was going to happen because he said, I will see you again. That's what he said. Now there's some debate as to whether the Lord was referring here to his resurrection or to his second coming. Here's my response. Who cares? Because the fact of the matter is, is we know after his resurrection, these disciples were filled with joy when they saw him alive again. This is found in John 20, 20 and Matthew 28, 8. But we also know that he's promised to come back to get his own in just a little while. John 14, 3. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be so real. So rejoice in the fact that in just a little while away, with our eyes wide open, truth that can help us be of good cheer, even in the midst of sorrow, and in the midst of trouble, in the midst of persecution, and in the midst of death even, it may look bleak, it may get tough, But let us be of good cheer because in a little while we're going to see the face of Jesus. Just like this where he says that when when a child is to be born the mother sorrows over the travail of birth. But when the newborn baby is placed in her arms she forgets her pain and she rejoices in her baby. He He tells us this here. So we, while we're separated from Jesus, we can expect sorrow. We can expect trouble. But one day when He puts His loving arms about us and when He welcomes us to glory, we will forget all the toils of the road and we will be forever at home with God. I'm telling you, that's enough to be of good cheer about. That's enough that in the midst of sorrow, we can have a smile in our hearts, knowing that this is not the end. That there's coming a day, and Jesus said, in just a little while, where we will see the Lord. The Bible says, for the night, morning. Hebrews 10, 37, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Number one, we can be of good cheer in the midst of all this troublesome news. We can be of good cheer because in a little while we'll see Jesus. But number two, we can also be of good cheer because whatever we ask the Father in the name of Christ, He will give us good cheer because now we can pray to God. This is found in verse 23. Look at this. He said in verse number 23, And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name. He will give it you. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive. That your joy may be full. Here's the point. In these verses the Lord reminded them again that even though He was going to be gone away from them, He's going away from them, He's telling them and He's he's teaching them. They still don't quite understand this, you understand, but they will, they'll get it eventually. He's teaching them here that you don't understand why I'm going away from you, but because I am, you will be able to pray directly to the Heavenly Father in my name, and He will grant your request. Folks, this is another truth that the troubles of this world cannot take away from us. It should cause our hearts to be of good cheer because we can talk to God and He hears our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. 
In other words, the things that are in accordance with His will, when it means to pray in the name of Christ, it doesn't mean just tag that on the end of your prayers. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. And as a matter of fact, I encourage you to do that. But what it means to pray in the name of Christ means He's in agreement with what you're asking. It means He would ask for the same thing for you. It means that He agrees with your prayer request and if it's in His name, He gives us a promise that God the Father will hear our prayers and He will answer those kind of prayers. Folks, that's enough to be of good cheer in the midst of trouble and sorrow. As the God of Israel, He had been known. But now believers were to approach Him in the conscious relationship of children addressing their Father. Because the Lord Jesus died, He was buried, and rose again, we can have direct access to the Father through the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe you've heard the story of that poor boy who was dying on the battlefield after one of the great conflicts in the war between the states. Another soldier nearby crawled to him and found this poor boy in a dreadful condition and did everything he could to help him. They talked together and then the other said, Now if I get out alive, is there anything I can do for you? Well, he said, maybe I can do something for you. He said, my father's wealthy. And if you get through this conflict alive and are ever in need, take this little card. And he took a card and he wrote some words on it and he, and he gave it to this to, 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 this, to this fellow soldier, and he said, go see my father, and, and I know he'll be ready to help you out. The soldier made it through. He didn't ever think he would use the card. But the time did come when he was in dire need. And he remembered the conversation he had with his buddy as he was dying on the battlefield. He went and found this wealthy man, the father of the, of the man who died, you see, and through the secretaries and other people there, he sent his own card in and he got no response from this wealthy man. But then he thought, wait a minute, that boy gave me his own card and he'd written some words on it, so he took that card out and sent it in instead. And on it were written these words, Father, if you can ever do anything for my friend who helped me when I was dying, please do so. And it was signed, Charlie, this boy's, this, 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 this wealthy man's son. What the man's own card could never do, that card, in just a moment, caused that man to come out of his office. And that man said this, and I quote, Oh, why didn't you send that in before? I will do anything that I can for you, for Charlie's sake. Are you listening? This is what Jesus is teaching His disciples. He's saying, I'm going to be taken away from you. And you're going to be hated and persecuted and even killed. And I know, verse 6, that this is filling your heart with sorrow. You don't understand it. But be of good cheer in the middle of this. Because in just a little while, you'll see me like you've never seen me before. Be of good cheer because... You will be able now, because of what I'm doing that you don't understand, you will be able to pray to the Father yourself in my name, and He will listen to you. Aren't you glad you can pray? Where in the world would we be if we could not pray? And friends, here's the thing. I believe it's time that God the Father is asking us to believe Him. That God wants to hear the prayers of His children. And He wants us to come to Him in the name of His Son. And when we do that, God promises He's going to hear our prayers. Amen. Now folks, this is enough to be of good cheer about. Amen. This is enough that, listen, no, nothing in the world can take that away from us. Amen. They can put us in the deepest, darkest dungeon. As a matter of fact, Satan did that to me. But one thing he could not take away from me. And I know I struggled, and I struggled terribly. But one thing he could not take away is I could still pray even when I went to the very bottom. Amen. I'm telling you, friends, never get over the fact that you can bow your head and say, Heavenly Father, don't ever get over that. Amen. What an amazing, amazing truth. Friends, this is what Jesus was saying to these disciples. Their hearts were troubled. Their Lord was leaving them. The Lord, I'm talking about the world would hate them and persecute them and kill them. 
that because of what the Lord Jesus was going to do, they would be able to approach the Heavenly Father in His name. And the Father would respond to their request. This truth is enough to help our hearts be of good cheer, even in the midst of sorrow, persecution, and even death. Be of good cheer because you can have the Heavenly Father listen to you pray. Wow! What a truth! Just get a hold of that tonight. Be of good cheer because in a little while we'll see Jesus like we've never seen Him before. Be of good cheer because if you pray to the Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus, He's listening to you and He's going to answer your prayers. Doesn't, doesn't stop there. In verses 26 to 28, He gives a third reason to be of good cheer. And that is be of good cheer because the Father loves you. He loves you. Look at verse number 26. At that day ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. Wow. Today has been a day, really, and really a week in thinking and meditating upon the love of God. And folks, I'm telling you, Jesus tells his disciples here, he's telling them something. He's saying, you can be in good cheer, be of good cheer, even though your heart is broken in, in, inside of your chest. Don't, don't, listen, don't ever get over the context of this passage. These men are broken hearted. They don't understand. They think they're losing it all, you see. And in the middle of that, Jesus said, be of good cheer. And another reason he says you can do this is because the Heavenly Father loves you. I'm telling you, Precious are the words of the Lord in these verses to His disciples. He tells them that He does not tell them that He will pray the Father for them. He said, I'm not telling you I'm going to pray to the Father for you. Now we know He's that. Don't miss that. That's, that's, that's not a contradiction. He's just teaching them something here. He's trying to tell them this. He's saying, the Father wants to hear from you. And the reason he wants to hear from you is because he loves you. And he loves you because you love me. You know what this word love means? It's a great word. You know what it means? It means to be a friend to, to be fond of, to have affection for, and to be personally attached to. That's what it means. Don't you want to have the Father as your friend? Don't you want to have the Father be fond of you? To have affection for you? And to be personally attached to you? Are you listening? If you're saved, you already have it. God loves you. He really does. You know one of the things I doubted in my pit? That God loved me. I doubted that. It's the old thing that the devil used on Eve back in the book of Genesis. Yea, hath God said. That's right. Yea, hath God said. All these kind of things. And one thing he tried to put in my mind is God doesn't love you. That's a lie. That's a lie from the devil himself is what that is. And I'm telling you, friends, that God the Father God the Father, I know, there, I, I know it's one God, I get it, that it's not a message on the Trinity, I understand, nobody can explain it in full anyway, but we know it's Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, one God, one, we understand that, but let's focus on this, the Heavenly Father loves me, and the Heavenly Father loves you. Now folks, that's enough to be of good cheer right there. That's enough to know that no matter what goes on, I am loved by God. Harry Ironside, you know, he was a decent man of God, you know. He said, suppose here's a family with a loving father, a wayward son and a sweet daughter. The son comes to his sister and says, Mary, I wish you would go to dad and ask for money for a new suit of clothes for me. He said, what would that imply if that son asked his sister to go to their father? He said, while that would imply that the son did not have confidence in his father's love, and so he says, Mary, won't you please go in and plead with the Father to give me the money? This is what Jesus is teaching. He's saying, yes, yes, I'm, he's constantly praying for us. Amen. 
But he's saying right here, I'm not going to tell you I'm going to pray for you. You can pray yourself. You can go to God the Father yourself. And the reason is because He loves you. He loves you. See, the Lord doesn't promise to petition the Father on their behalf. Because that might suggest distance, coldness between the Father and them. They somehow had to be persuaded to answer their prayers. He loved them. He was eager to hear them and answer them. And what the Lord is teaching here is that the Father loves us as much as the Son loves us and reaches out to us as much as He, Jesus, reaches out to us. The point here is because of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, sinful men can have the Heavenly Father's wrath turned into affection, fondness, attachment, friendliness because of what Jesus did on Calvary. Now folks, this is enough to be of good cheer. Even when faced with hatred, persecution, and even death. God the Father loves those in this way who loves the Lord Jesus Christ and believes in Him. I can't explain that. Why would God love somebody like me? Why? You listening? For Jesus' sake. For Jesus' sake. Be of good cheer in the midst of all this trouble, all this sorrow. Because in a little while we're going to see the Lord like we've never seen Him before. Be of good cheer because we can pray to the Heavenly Father ourselves in the name of Jesus and He will hear us and answer our prayers. Be of good cheer because we can do that because the Father loves us. He really loves us. And then the fourth thing that we see is we can be of good cheer because Jesus has overcome the world. We see this in verses 29 to 33. He says, His disciples said unto Him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee? By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye should be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. Yet I'm not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I've spoken unto you, and in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. See, at this point the disciples say that they believe that He did come from God. And the Lord burst their bubble here. He let them know not to be overconfident in their flesh, you see. He told them that the hour was now come when they would be scattered from Him and leave Him alone. Yet He said, the Father is going to be with me. Then he went into the last words of this message before he lifted his eyes and he began to pray in chapter 17. Before he did that, he went into these last words. He told them that in him they could have peace. And he told them that in the world they would have tribulation. But they could be of good cheer because he has overcome the world. You know what the word overcome means? It means to subdue, conquer, prevail, or get the victory over. In other words, you know what the Lord's telling them here? Be of good cheer because we've already won. That's what He's saying. They are not on the losing side, but they are on the winning side. The world in which His people would be so mistreated, so hated, so abused and killed has been defeated by the one that they truly hate and killed, the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, this is enough to be of good cheer even in the face of hatred, persecution, and death. We who believe and are saved, we are on the winning side. I remember hearing that dear old man of God who's with the Lord, Dr. Curtis Hudson. As he sung that song, Once I wandered out in sin Had no peace, no joy within And my soul was burdened down with pride but the Savior came along and he showed me I was wrong and he placed me on the winning side he went on to sing well I'm on the winning side yes I'm on the winning side no more out in sin will I abide I've enlisted in the fight for the cause of truth and right. Praise the Lord 
I'm on the winning side. He went on to say, I shall never have a fear, for my Lord is ever near. And in Him so often I confide. He's the keeper of my soul since I gave to Him control and He placed me on the winning side. As, as the old hymn goes, victory in Jesus. And there is victory in the Lord. If you know Jesus, my friends, everything's okay. You're on the winning side. We've already won. We've already won the battle. These men with the Lord that night have just been told their world was about to change. I mean, the rug has been stripped out from underneath them. The one they loved so dearly was going to leave them, and they didn't understand. The world that they were living in was going to hate them, persecute them, and even kill them. And this filled their heart with sorrow. They were brokenhearted. They were standing in that room, if you will, their heart weeping, and God knew it. But in the midst of their sorrowful heart, in the midst of their troubled heart, in the midst of their pain and their turmoil inside, Jesus looked at them that night and He said, Be of good cheer. Be comforted. Take courage. Because in just a little while, you'll see me like you've never seen me before. Take courage and be of good cheer because whatever you ask the Father in my name, He'll listen to you and you'll receive it. You can pray. Be of good cheer because the Father loves you. He loves you, child. And be of good cheer because I've overcome the world and you're on the winning side. You know, tonight, the Lord just laid on my heart right before service or maybe right, right as service was beginning. And I wrote it down right here in my own handwritten notes as an asterisk. Gather to praise, worship, and glorify God. You know what I think the Lord wants tonight? I don't think. I know He does. You think He doesn't know about your broken heart. You think He doesn't know what burdens you're carrying. You think He doesn't understand the heartache that this world is full of. Do you think He doesn't understand that there's sorrow everywhere we turn? Everywhere. We do not know what tomorrow holds. And I'm telling you, this world is full of things that breaks our hearts. Amen or not? But God, I like those two words, but God. But God has told us be of good cheer in the middle of it all. And we can only do that because of what He did has brought about these four things here. Because He left them and because that broke their heart. But because of where He went and what He did, in just a little while, sinful man would be able to look upon Jesus and see Him in a way that we would never be able to look upon Him otherwise. Because of that heartache, we can now pray and say, Our Heavenly Father, for Jesus' sake, and God the Father will listen to our prayers. Because of that heartache, we understand that God the Father loves us in a very special way. If we love Jesus and we believe on Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. He loves the world. We understand that. But this is a special love here for God's child. And because of that heartache, we understand that now we too can be on the winning side. Do you understand this? Do you get this? Does it not cause something inside of your heart to say, mm, I like that. Amen. And tonight, I'm telling you, I believe what the Lord wants is to make sure everybody un, 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 under this roof and those who are watching live, if you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, today's the day of salvation. Now's the accepted time. Because these truths only apply to God's children, you see. And if you're God's child, everything's okay in my Father's house. 
If you're not God's child, today's the day. You come and be saved. You call out to the Lord by faith, confessing your sin to Him, believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, and trusting His death, His burial, His resurrection to forgive your sin and save your soul. And you call out to Him and ask Him to be your Lord and your Master and save you and forgive you and change your life. And He's promised He'll do that. But I trust that maybe most of you, maybe all of you, you know the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I believe what the Lord would have out of His children tonight is just like what He did with those ten lepers when He healed all ten of them. But only one came back to say thank you. And He asked the question, where are the nine? Don't be one of the nine. Be the one who says, God, it's tough down here. It's rough down here. It's heartache down here. It's troublesome down here. But I thank you that I can be of good cheer in spite of it all. Because someday in my heart, I know I'm going to see Jesus. I'm going to see the Lord in a way I've never seen Him. And I thank you that in the middle of trouble, I can still pray to the Heavenly Father, and He hears me pray. And I thank you that in the middle of trouble, I can rejoice in the fact that the Heavenly Father loves me. And I thank you, Jesus, that you've put me on the winning side.